Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Thibaut. Uh, bonjour, hello, merhabalar to everyone for this uh, evening. Uh, before starting my presentation, uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Thibaut Castelli for his kind invitation to be the eighth speaker of this Prontic webinar series. Uh, with this occasion, I am happy to see professors, uh, colleagues, friends, and also students here. And thank you all for your participation this evening. For those uh, who don't have enough information about the city or to, be, to better understand the epigraphic material on the, or the epigraphic habits, at the beginning of my presentation, uh, I would like to introduce you the site in general terms. Uh, the ancient city of Tios, which was located to the west of where the Filios River uh, discharged into the Black Sea and was one of the trans uh, transit points between the eastern, Bithynia, and western Paphlagonia regions in the ancient period is located today in the Filios township of Chajuma district of the Zonguldak province in the western Black Sea region of Turkey. It's one of the few ancient sites uh, along this coastline that has not entirely disappeared under modern buildings or deep silt deposits. Uh, by the way, it therefore offers a unique opportunity to investigate the structure, function, and also development of the long-standing settlement on the southern Black Sea coast. Uh, being a coastal settlement, having one of the few natural harbors on the southern Black Sea uh, coast and lying at the mouth of the river Bilaios, modern Krios today, with a fertile hinterland accessible by river and river valley. Tios had a strategic uh, position and economical importance in the region. Uh, the settlement's origins are described by Stephanos, uh, Byzantinos, Estatius, and also by Strabo, uh, who writes that it was the capital of the local tribe of Kaukons, a Paphlagonian tribe living on the other side of the river Bilaios, before a Milesian colony was established in the second half of the 7th century BC. Uh, Stephanos Byzantinos, quoting from Hellenius Philon uh, in his Ethnica, tells us that a Milesian priest, Theos, was the founder of this colony as the leader of other Milesian uh, colonists. His phrase apparently provides us with the explanation of where the name Theos comes from. Confirming this information, we can see the depictions of the priest Theos on the right here, on Roman imperial coins, from Tios. Uh, Stephanos, quoting from Demosthenes of Bithynia also in the same paragraph, uh, also gives a different explanation uh, that Pataros, a Thracian leader who invaded the Paphlagonia region and established the settlement of uh, Tios and named it in honor of Zeus as Tios. He correlates the words Tios and Zeus. Some scholars also sometimes me, think that the word Theos, Theos comes from Dios, the genitive form of Zeus. In some new Phrygian inscriptions that are found in the regions of Galatia and Phrygia, we see the genitive form Dios converted into Theos. From ancient authors, uh, we learned that the settlement was dependent on various powers throughout its Hellenistic history, uh, including uh, the tyranny of Heracleia, the Simoikismos of Amastris, the Bithynian Kingdom, and also Pontic Kingdom. After the dramatic defeat of the King of Pontus, it is Mithridates uh, VI Theopator in the Mithridatic Wars, and following the Roman annexation in 70 BC, we see that Theos finally ended up in the province of Pontus at Bithynia by Pompeii in 64 BC until the reign of the Apletianus. Now you see the two maps uh, that were uh, drawn by Christian Mark. Uh, the archaeological excavations at Theos in 2000 began in 2007, uh, firstly, under the direction of uh, Professor Dr. Suman Atasoy and uh, continued until 2013. After his retirement, uh, where, from where he left, uh, Dr. Shahin Yildirim with uh, also Karadeniz Ereli Museum, heads now the excavations up to now. Before the excavations, uh, the visible remains of the ancient city were the coastal defensive walls, castle walls, the port with its breakwaters around the Acropolis and Aquaductus, the theater, uh, a Roman basilica, 
vaulted galleries above the lower city and a number of tombs dated to the Roman and Byzantine periods. The constructions in the lower city include a Roman theater from the second century AD, which has been cleared and partly excavated, an aqueductus with five surviving arches, an infion, a Roman bed complex found close to the arches of aqueductus and partly excavated. And also the others, also temple platform, you'll see now by slice by slide. Uh, Acropolis uh, has yielded a Byzantine church and the remains of a Roman temple on a high podium. Uh, the temple was a Roman one, uh, stood on a high podium. During the excavations, two Doric capitals made of local andesites, with one of them being intact, and parts of numerous Corinthian style of architectural elements were found. Former capitals were found around the site. A chapel during 2015 and 2016 seasons. The Doric capitals and the column fragments may belong to another structure connected to the temple. As you see, uh, there are uh, many uh, articles uh, were written on some parts of Tios by the head of now. Uh, Sumer Atasoy and also Shahin Yildirim and also other members of this excavation. You will sometimes see on the slide who wrote this article on left on the right part of the slide. Uh, having columns, this small temple rising above a high podium uh, should be Corinthian in order as we have found very little pieces of local stone and white marble architectural elements of the supper structure belonging to Corinthian composite capitals. It should have been built in second century AD. Parts of white marble architectural elements of the supper structure indicate that the structure belongs to the Corinthian order. Uh, also a coin of Tios here uh, exhibited in an auction abroad, uh, abroad belonging to the Severus uh, Alexander period in the third century and on which Zeus is depicted in a temple in the Corinthian order as holding a patera in a temple. Thus, despite the lack of exact evidence, it's possible to assume that Zeus temple dedicated on the coin may be uh, actually the temple in the Acropolis. Now here, the coin. So uh, also a church uh, building was built right next to the temple in the Byzantine period. This is the cistern built on a platform uh, of the temple you see here, but next to it, a church uh, was built right next to the temple in the Byzantine period. And some of temples blocks were used as spoiler in this church. Furthermore, the periphery of the church and the temple was used as a necropolis in the same period. As a result of these excavations on the Acropolis are the remains of a small church dated to the mid Byzantine period. You will see, you will see some slides that reflects also the temple and uh, the church next to it. On the sarcophagi uh, found in situ, we find two grave inscriptions dated to the Roman imperial period, which give the names Diogenes, son of Diogenes, who died at the age of 85, and also the other Rufus Paulinus, or Rufus son of Paulinus due to the breakage in the second line, two options we have. Uh, the excavations at the Eastern part of Acropolis, the Malaysian ceramics, uh, the remains of the walls found in this area made it clear that the settlement on Acropolis started in the archaic period dating from the last quarter of 7th century BC. You will see now on the slides uh, some photographs taken during the excavations on the Eastern part of Acropolis. Uh, and also this is the final uh, site of the, the uh, eastern part of Acropolis. It's taken from the uh, article of Shine Milderum, TA on Acropolis. Uh, these are the uh, location of the houses that were drawn into, into circle here. Also, you see some photographs, ancient ports, and also the excavated part of the uh, port, the coastal walls and halls of mooring poles here by Shahin Yildirim again. Also on the lower city, you see the remains of an aqueductus and Roman bed, new fayum. Uh, the other part is uh, there is a theater of Roman theater of 
TOS here, you may see, which was once described as being among the best, best preserved in Asia Minor, in question mark. Archaeologists, epigraphists, ambassadors, missionaries such as uh, Charles Texier, Einsward, uh, von Dierst, and Skalinka, Gustav Mendel, Lou Robert, and also Christine Malek and the others traveling, researching, and serving of the Black Sea region here. They all published books, articles concerning the results and their notes here. Uh, also, they surely published uh, many inscriptions. You'll see some pages of uh, Kalinka's publication aus Bithynien here, und Ungenburg is an uh, article. Also, Lou Robert uh, visited the site in 1932, uh, firstly. He made several publications, books and articles related to uh, with, uh, Tios. You may see the, maybe uh, one of the earliest photographs of uh, complete uh, ancient site of Tios here, two photographs we have from Lou Robert. Also, and, and the other photographs uh, which uh, Lou Robert gives us, uh, some of them were found now in the museums, Istanbul Archaeological Museums, Kastamonu Museums, but some of them today were lost, unfortunately. Uh, when I uh, Coming to my story for Tios uh, in 2007, uh, Professor Sumer Atasoy first uh, invited me uh, when I was at the beginning of my PhD, he invited me uh, to be the epigraphist member of uh, Tios excavations. By the way, uh, after that, uh, the corpus of Tios, the inscriptions of Tios became my tema of uh, PhD thesis. And also it finished in 2000. Uh, to her, at the end of 2012. After that, uh, uh, Shahin Yildirim uh, was the lead, uh, head of the excavations and also we continued our work in uh, the site. From starting from 2007 uh, till 2021, uh, surely we have found uh, at the excavations many inscriptions. Some of them were collected from the territory of Tios. And also, uh, you see some uh, list here, uh, what kind of inscriptions we have on Tios. We tried to uh, find the inscriptions who wrote, uh, sorry, Lou Robert and also Gustav Mendel also and Skalinka uh, published. We tried to find them also. By the way, we visited the museums in the region, Istanbul Archaeological Museums, Kastamonu Museums, Karadeniz Ereğli Museum. We, uh, try to uh, com uh, com uh, find and complete all the inscriptions. By the way, in my PhD thesis uh, till the 2012, uh, I made a corpus of Tios. After that, uh, with the excavations going on, uh, new inscriptions also came to light. By the way, my project is going on on the city. Uh, what kind of inscriptions? Roman honorary inscriptions. We'll see some of them today. I will not show you all the inscriptions. It's impossible for a short period, but I have chosen some examples, some argu argu argumentative inscriptions I try to choose and show you. Uh, you see the here uh, transcription of translation of the this script inscription. Also, uh, the third one, it was an interesting one. It was published in Zeichel for Population of Epigraphic uh, last year. Uh, you see here uh, an honorary statute based during the reign of Caecilius Aristo, the governor of Provincia Pontus et Bithynia uh, in 218 AD. Uh, this stone is reported to have been found by a local person in Saltukova township of Chargema and was given to the archaeological uh, survey team. Subsequently, it was transported to the excavation house in Filios and is currently exhibited in its garden. Its translation is as follows. When Caeculus Aristo was legatus Augusti proprietore, the most brilliant city of the people of Tios uh, set up a statue for blah, blah, blah. Uh, it should be possibly uh, a dedication maybe for an emperor or a member of a family of an emperor. By the way, we don't know it because the beginning of the inscription is broken. Also the end of the inscription is broken. We have just here uh, 
four lines, four fragmentary lines. By the way, what's important on this inscription is that uh, the governor, Caecilius Aristo, is documented for the first time as epigraphically. Uh, of his former career is known uh, that, that as a clericimus vir, uh, Caecilius Aristo was a curator operum publicorum together with Maximinus Paulinus, curator Aedium Sacrorum in 214 AD. Uh, therefore, he was few years before Consul Sufectus, since these curators were normally appointed very quickly after they consulate. Moreover, his name appears in the act of the Ludi Saeculares in 204 AD, but he's mentioned there as the husband of his wife, no official title was added. Of his later career, Pursus uh, Honorum, we know the governorship of Pontus Bithynia attested in the now the new inscription, but also by Cassius Dio. According to his narrative, the emperor Macrinus tried to escape to the western part of the empire after his army was defeated by the troops of Elagabaus near Antiochia. While Macrinus was sailing from Eribodon to Chalcedon, he didn't want to enter Nicomedia out of fear of Caecilius Aristo, the governor of Bithynia. It was the uh, only mention of uh, Caecilius Aristo as uh, in a ancient literary source, but this was the first time epigraphical we see his name on the inscription of Theos. Uh, surely at that time, Caecilius Aristo was in office. Uh, he was Legatus Augusti Proprietoria, as it's, it's, it is seen on the inscription. Since when he was governor of Pontus Pitinia is not known, uh, theoretically he could have been appointed by Caracalla, by Macrinus himself or by Elagabalus. We don't know it exactly. That had, he had already joined uh, Elagabalus when Macrinus was on the run can easily be explained because Macrinus had no longer had an army on his side. Therefore, there is no reason to suppose that he was appointed by Elagabalus. The year of his appointment, uh, by the way, must for the moment uh, remain unclear. The monument with its inscription uh, from Theos, on which Caecilius Aristo is named as Imperial Legat, then belongs most likely to the years before the end of 2018 or maybe beginning of uh, 2019. Uh, surely, uh, a dedication still under uh, Caracalla uh, is quite possible. By the way, who was hundred here? It's unknown, possibly. Uh, maybe it was as I mentioned at the beginning of the inscription, it was one of the emperors, Caracalla, maybe Macrinus, maybe Elagabalus, or a member of the imperial family, or an Evergetes. But uh, that seems likely that uh, since the governor was involved when the monument was erected, maybe someone from the imperial family. Caecilius Aristos governorship ended either still in 2018 or at the latest in the first half of 2000. Uh, 19. There are so many uh, weights, weights, inscript weights that gives the next ruler. By the way, uh, it was an important inscription for the history of Theos and also Eastern Roman Bithynia, I may say. Now, uh, I'll talk about uh, the milestones that were found at the uh, territory of Theos. As I mentioned before, uh, many people visited the site, like Lou Robert, Gustav Mendel, and Skalinka. But uh, who is famous with the final stones is David French, also, you know. He made so many visits to the uh, many parts of Bithynia, Pontus, and those other sites of Asia Minor, and he published so many inscriptions. He, he made so many catalogs, including also the milestones of Theos. By the way, uh, Mr. French also listed all the published milestones which are dated to the period of emperors Vespasianus, Antoninus Pius, Septimius Severus, Caracalla Geta, Constantinus, and Licinius, as well as new milestones without inscriptions which dated to the periods of Caracalla, Decius, and Etruscilla, uh, Diocletianus, and Maximianus, Constantius I, and Galerius. 
Now you see the map here that was drawn by uh, David French and to find spots, uh, the previous milestones uh, were found. On this point, on the yellow point, we uh, two new milestones were found. Uh, now they are in Karadeniz Ereğli Museum and they all published uh, in an uh, article in a journal by me. Uh, it's well known that inscribed milestones are of vital uh, importance uh, for dating the renovation of these roads that lead to Maastricht in the Northeast and also inland to Claudiopolis in the Southwest. Uh, by the way, uh, now I will show you the groups of milestones uh, from the territory of Teos. Firstly, we surely uh, try to uh, find the milestones which David French published, we followed his notes. By the way, these notes lead, led us to uh, Chaijuma region, the center of Chaijuma. We found these uh, milestones there in a soldier camp here. Uh, after we also visited the villages in the territory of Teos, which David French uh, told us. One of them was uh, Yukari Isani, which we will see uh, in the second slide after that. What we have done during this period uh, with the uh, permission of Karadeniz Ereğli Museum, with the head of Karadeniz Ereğli Museum, and also Shahin Yıldırım, and also me, uh, all these milestones uh, to be kept better uh, were carried to the Acropolis of Teos. You see the transportation procession here. Uh, they were carried from, uh, from the uh, Chajma and also from Yukari Isaniye, upper Isaniye uh, village to the uh, Acropolis of Teos. Uh, a photo of Acropolis uh, by Shahin Yildirim from his uh, article you see here. All these milestones are being exhibited in this area, in a special area for the visitors who come here to see the Acropolis. Uh, also, there are some other photographs were taken, aerial photographs you see here. Uh, this is the Roman temple today. This is the Byzantine church. Also, uh, the visitors come here from this wall. They, uh, they walk here and also they see all the uh, milestones here. Uh, we also added some uh, placas. Uh, we gave the visitors the translations and also transcriptions of these milestones. When they come there, visit the Acropolis, they read what they see. Uh, all the, the transcriptions of uh, milestones are on Acropolis now. You see one by one uh, the milestones. One of them is milestone of the period of the emperor. Uh, Antoninus Pius, you see here, it's Turkish and uh, English uh, slides, bilingual, as you will see here. It's a Greek text, uh, also it's uh, brought from Yukari Isaniye Köyü. Also it's dated to the 140 and 141. One of them was that. The other one was a uh, milestone of the period of Emperor Septimius Severus, his sons Caracalla and uh, also Geta. The upper part of this milestone were broken, unfortunately, when we found it. Uh, but uh, when I search, make a search on the inscription here, uh, I saw two letters here. You see two letters here uh, that the previous uh, publishers uh, didn't see, haven't seen. By the way, it was a chance for me to build the upper part of the inscription. Now uh, I discovered that it is not only a Greek inscription, it should be a bilingual inscription. Uh, you see here, also here, you see that it is the Latin part of the bilingual inscription, just two letters, A and C. It fits the text, surely. We have also one more milestone. We have also one more milestone from the Teos that is in Karadeniz Ereğli Museum. It is also bilingual inscription. By the way, we compare two texts and also Saker Goten here, the bilingual parts, Latin part, 
fits with the grid part. By the way, now we, as a suggestion for the Latin text, we build this one. Also, we may say that it was a bilingual like the other one. Uh, it was the uh, addenda. Surely you, you know that. For it, the other inscription is that it's also published in Filia Journal. It is now in Karadenizareli Museum, Museum, and it's found. It was found in the southern uh, territory of Teos. There is an emporium there. Possibly you will see in, on the in the uh, following slides that part of the Teos. Now uh, the other uh, milestone is. Uh, coming from the Tetrarchia periods, milestone of the period of the emperors Diocletianus and Maximianus with their Caesares, Constantius I and Galerius. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was not good uh, kept in Chaijuma uh, when David French uh, copied it. There were some parts uh, to be read, but you see here there are some uh, corruptions on the stone, but uh, also uh, what was important in, on this part is the distance. It was kappa and beta in the Greek one. Possibly there were lines raised, there were previous lines here. It was reused in the following uh, years by the text, but it showed, it gave us the distance as 22. Also, the other milestone. Uh, this is the period of Constantius the first and the Galerius, possibly with their Caesares, Severus, and Maximinus. It's also dated to uh, 300 and 305 and 306. By the way, I don't read all the descriptions, uh, trans, uh, translations, but uh, you see here it was also shows that the renovation on the Roman roads of, and also on the Roman Eastern parts of Bithynia continued till the uh, beginning of fourth century. Uh, a part of a Roman road that was found uh, near Yukari Isani, which we visited there by uh, Shahin Yildirim, uh, years ago, and also some of the villagers, uh, okay, sorry, one of the villagers show us that part of the Roman road. By the way, it, it is Yukari Isani, which were the previous milestones were found. Uh, that go, that road goes to Amastris, we think that. Also, uh, the milestones were them. Uh, now the other group is uh, Agoronomikos inscriptions, you'll see here. Uh, this is in Kastamonu Museum. This is lost. This is lost. This is also lost. <laughs> and also the others just coming from the drawings of Karinka. Uh, we haven't found them yet, but uh, it's important that we have photographs also. From these following five altars, I may say, uh, which three of them are inscribed as Agoronomikos and carry the depictions of bell, scales, and weights are related directly with the office of Agoronomoi, who would have been responsible for controlling the order of the Agora, legally responsible for ensuring that what was sold uh, was in good condition and genuine, setting prices for cert certifying goods, commercial weights and scales, controlling money exchanges, find anyone lying in the Agora and collected market taxes and the special fee for alien traders. It's the general information, you know, for Agoronomoi. In the Agora, they usually had an office named the Agora Nomion. Uh, the figures of bell, scales, you see here, scales. It's a bell and also it's something like a measure or a snake. And also you see the here weights, five, lead weights, you will see them later. Uh, the figures of bell scans and uh, weights, which are known both as the symbols of commerce and were also symbolizing the function and the duties of agoronomoi in Teos. In addition to the weights and the measures, the agoronomoi had the instruments to control the opening hours of the market. Several inscriptions testify to the dedication of maybe Sandil by agoronomoi. Among them, the bell was used 
by Agora Nomoi to announce the opening of the Agora and the sale. And anecdotes reported by Plutarchus uh, turned to those who listened eagerly for the sound of the Agora's uh, bell and rushed off to the fishmongers uh, as soon as the market uh, opened. Uh, Strabo also mentions how a group of people from Yasos in Karia, uh, who were listening to a guitar player, uh, ran to fish markets uh, as they heard the bell that announced the fish selling. The type and the form of those stones, the phrase Agate Tuhe, registered at the beginning of the two of them, just two of them, and the inscription comprising of just single words, it is Adora Nomikos, are clear indicators that they were dedicated as altar. It is not impossible to reach a final judgment from their inscriptions, surely, and figures for which reasons those altars were erected as they lack personal names or any other decision word or phrase. I think uh, there are a few possibilities uh, here. They might have been dedicated or offered at the beginning or at the end of their tenure of an agronomicos in a religious attitude. By the way, the depictions on them may be the materials which they had dedicated in practice. They probably supervised special agencies responsible for guaranteeing measures of capacity by means of stone blocks with one or several cavities. Uh, the second possibility, they were the signboards of agronomicoi and might have been erected in front of their office building, agronomio. In the agora of important and strategical points to show and determine their dominance in the area. Uh, three similar dedications of here you see three similar dedications of agora nomai are also uh, known from the neighboring city of Amastris, and they offer us the opportunity to compare the walls, unlike those in Tios. One of them carries the name of the dedicant Apaturiu Huginu, together with the title Agoronomikos. The uninscribed other two of them carry the depictions of scales, again, bell, X, snake, and tape measure on them. Uh, the commercial lead weights, which were found at the remains of an emporium, it's of Tios, which is located at the bank of Philios in ancient Bilaios River, similarly with those altars, also carry the depictions of scales, bells, and group of weights. You will see in the next group. Uh, the river Bilaios uh, was of central importance for the economy of Tios because it provided fertile fertile land to the inhabitants along the river, access to the interior parts of Anatolia, and according to Lou Robert, as the first nearly 20 kilometers were navigable to boats of only a meter draft, and it was used for transport of agricultural products from the cultivated areas and timbers from uh, rich forests. The river Bilaios is depicted on the Roman coins of Tios as a personified river god, leading us to understand that it was worshipped by the citizens as a sign of respect for what in effect was their life blood. Uh, the area is here, an emporio, as I mentioned before. It's the Bilaios River, it's the fine spots of milestones, also the modern way. Uh, goes from this valley. Now, uh, the part is in Gökçe Bay region at the southern uh, territory of Tios. Uh, by chance, maybe by chance, uh, a flood in 19, uh, 200, sorry, two, 2009 in the Gökçe Bay region on the southern border of Tios allowed the remains of a construction to came to uh, light that calls to mind a customs warehouse near the Filios River, where it meets with Devrek River. 
During a surface survey in the field in 2010, two inscript lead weights were found under water. Uh, we are also aware of the other lead weights that were found from that area, which have the same features in ter terms of shape and inscription. In addition to the names of the councils, Bule and Demos, these weights give us the name of an epistates named Arianus, and they bear the dated depictions of Zeus, Dionysos, and Hams in the shape of busts, and also Kerikeion, Exus, Scales, Bells, a group of weights together, and etc. At the beginning of uh, September 2012, a survey research in the area was started by Karadeniz Ereli Museum and also Dr. Shahin Yildirim, and, and a, a salvage excavation were uh, made in the area. And uh, many potteries, many coins, many, many amphora handles, uh, and also some lead weights were found in that uh, area. So you see the group of uh, these uh, lead weights with the depictions on them. Uh, I made a group uh, related with the depictions. Dionysus Zeus is the first group. The second group is Dionysus Hermes. The third group on the obverse is Hermes, on the reverse is Zeus. On the fourth is Scales and also five uh, weights. Uh, scales, bell, also sixth group is uh, X and Kerikeion, you see here. Also, uh, you see the weights of these groups, 10 minaya, 5 minaya, 2 minaya, and also the others you maybe see here. One of them is uh, in a local museum here. In a, uh, you see the inscription here on the obverse, Agate Tuhe Bules Demo Tiam. Uh, it shows us that uh, it was the trade was under the control of maybe uh, Bule and Demo of Tios, and also this Emporion uh, was under control of the city of Tios. On the other side of these lead weights, in the pan shaped uh, weights you see here, uh, it says Arianos, Epistates, Epsilon, and Nu, and also uh, the other. Uh, letters of Greek letters that is under, not understandable. The other uh, lead weight you see here also, uh, it's Terminae again. Sorry. It's the same, it is the uh, similar one, but a different one. Uh, the other group was found in an auction. Unfortunately, it was sold on an uh, auction, five of them. We don't know now where are they now, to whom they who, uh, bought these lead weights. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, to prove the Boolean demos of Tios, you see a coin of Tios in the Roman Imperial period, and also again the other uh, coin here, also depicting shaking hands of and demos here. Also, we know the demos of Tios from an uh, inscription of uh, Sinope here, or demos Tianon, also is depicted here, written here. The other, uh, you see, uh, lead weight. The other one, Hams and Zeus to Minaya. We also think that on one of, uh, from the surviving letters, it should be Agate Tuhe, also the continuing verse, Bules Demo. Tianon, with good fortune also, you know. There are some uh, uh, illegible uh, letters. Uh, this is the group from the auction. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to see them, also read them. You see here also coins of Hermes. Sorry. Uh, this is, these are the one, sorry. Uh, these are the one from Chanakchilar Museum. Also, you see here, the depictions of uh, lead weights. You see the lead weights on a lead weight. Five groups, of five lead weights in a group uh, are depicted on a lead weight here. This is uh, the same one, uh, similar one, sorry, uh, that is on the auction catalog. 
The other one was found in, in Istanbul Archaeological Museum. Uh, similar to that one in, uh, sold in Triton auction catalog, you see here. Unfortunately, on the, uh, on the obverse part of this lit red, just is red uh, agate. The other pass is completion by me. Also, the other uh, lit red, similar to the Istanbul Archaeological Museum one. Uh, and also the one which was given us by uh, previous uh, Kalinka, uh, in the publication of Kalinka, we see the just drawing here, but uh, I think that uh, he copied in wrong way the inscription. Maybe it is Antonius, something like that, but uh, I think uh, maybe it is similar to the one that was found in Karadeniz Reilly Museum, Aurelio Antonino, but his drawing not clear, uh, not giving the right, uh, I think, uh, letters. Also, here, uh, like and similarly with the lead ways, uh, the inscriptions also give us some information uh, about religious history of Teos. Among them, we see two dedications to Dionysos. Uh, one is inscribed as Dionysiokos, here you see. And also the other one is Dioniso Trophicos here, surprisingly. This allows us to consider a Dionysiac association in the city as Dionysos is accepted as the date founder of, as the Christus of Teos, you see on the coins of the Roman Imperial periods in the period of Traianus and also Marcus Aurelius, Dionysos is with its epithet Christus. Uh, Surely it is related with the cultivation of grapes in the area and wine production in Teos is attested in Geoponica, an agricultural almanac, you know, compiled in the 10th century AD. Both these depic depictions, say, dedications, sorry, uh, depict Kista Mystica, also a known symbol of Dionysia cult. You see on the coins, Kerukeion, like the, the lead weights, also many uh, coins we have from the Roman Imperial period that depicts on the reverse parts, uh, Kerukeion. Uh, the milestone that I mentioned before, it is also found near a position uh, to this Emporion sites. It's bilingual uh, milestone dated to the period of Septimius Severus and also the others. Uh, this is this is the second inscription we found in that area. Also, uh, what we are we have chance here that it gives us the distance uh, twenty two miles. Uh, it is found in Gökçe Bey region. Unfortunately, this part is possibly stayed uh, under water. That is why, but uh, we completed all the parts of the inscription. Now it is uh, being exhibit exhibited in the garden of Karadeniz Ereni Museum and dated to the period of Karakalla. It's a Latin milestone. Also, uh, the other argumentative inscription is that uh, it was found on this site, sorry. It was found on this site in a village under a house uh, it was first reported by a uh, catalog from Ergun Lafle and Eva Christoph. By the way, it was important for us because it uh, mentions uh, Agon of Surgastius. Uh, now uh, it was a rectangular limestone base uh, you see here. Uh, it is in Yenice district of Karabük region province. Also, a, a region that is a transit route between eastern Bithynia and western Paphlagonia in the territory of Teos. We are not sure that it is the territory of Teos uh, because, as you see here, we have another uh, police here, Hadriana police. Uh, it is previous uh, Kaisareia. Taking, in taking into consideration the different transcriptions suggested in the previous publications for the sixth and the seventh lines of this inscription, mentioning the decaprotoi of decaprotoi and the year. You'll see, you'll see it, it's here now. It's published. Uh, also, I made some comments on these inscriptions and also made, made some comments on the previous publications. This is the Kayarka Sikoyu. This is Tiayon. Uh, this is the uh, map of the site also 
some suggestion for the boundaries of the cities here. Uh, the first uh, translation of this inscription was given by the first publisher of the inscription. It says that Antiochus, son of Antiochus, having been the agonotetes of the Sugasto, Sugastios Agon in the time of the Decaprotoi of the year of 141. Very surprising uh, description for the area because uh, it's uh, for the first time we learned that there was an Agon celebrated in the name of the god of Surgastios. Surgastios is, uh, we know it from the Roman colonies of Tios, is a local god that is uh, worshipped in the area, but we don't have enough information about this god. Uh, we'll talk about it later. This was the first uh, trans transcription of the inscription. After that, uh, Alexander Avram, uh, who passed away a short while ago, uh, he thought that no, uh, it was wrong translation. It should be read as he, you see here in the line. Antiochus, son of Antiochus, having been the Agonotetes of the Agon of Sugastios, in the time of the Decaproton, died at the age of 40. You see here, Eton, and there's a breakage here, and also there is a, uh, there is, it seems like that there is not a letter here, and also there's a vacat here, and we see here the number mu. It is uh, for Alexander Avram, the age is 40. And also the third uh, translation uh, came from Christoph Summits. Uh, he told, he write in his book about the Decaproto that he also uh, take this, he has taken this inscription. Antiochus, son of Antiochus, having been the Agonotetes, of, Agonotetes for the first 10 years of the Agon of Surgastios. By the way, uh, you see here the uh, missing part, the breakage here. At the first reading, they have written, they have read that there should be a row here. And also there should be an alpha here for 141, surely. And also in a not order, you, you see that it is mu also here, but uh, Alexander Auram didn't agree with this idea also. The irregular uh, of these numbers, uh, he said that uh, no, it should be at all mu. By the way, uh, also I am not sure. <laughs> also I am not sure about that. Uh, Alexander Auram seems to me that he's he may be right about the reading, but the argumentative part is why the inscription mentions Decaproto here and. Who are these Decaproto? Where are their names? Or why their names were not written here? And also what, for which reason the inscriptions, if it is a great inscription, for which re uh, reason the inscription mentions this Decaproto for, uh, on this line. By the way, we see here Haire, it's a common usage of grave inscriptions. And also we see here Follum, you see here, a typical form that were depicted on the grave altars or grave inscriptions. By the way, uh, it's also, it seems also argumentative inscription for me. Uh, the other part is, uh, except from the argumentative translations, what is important here, I think, is the first mention of Agon Surgastios that is possibly celebrated uh, according to the uh, letter character in the time of Hadrianus or after, shortly after. In order to understand the origin and the form of the Agon of Surgastios, firstly, the cult of Zeus, Surgastes, Surgastios, should be explained in the light of Roman provincial coins of Theos. Also, dedications from Apulum and Brixia, uh, and also, surely, from ancient literary sources, Sugastios, Sugastios mentioned here, is the god seen as 
Zeus Surgas Dios and Zeus Surgastes on the Roman period coins of the city of Tios. As it can be understood, uh, Surgas Dios, uh, he should be a local god, uh, possibly a Thracian or Thracov region in this region or a Paphlagonian god, whose origin probably, probably dates back to the arrival uh, from before the arrival of the Hellens to the region. The word, the word has a Thracian origin, uh, according to many research on this name, uh, and means the bright sky. And by the way, uh, in Thracian language, sure. By the way, underwent in that period, syncretismos with Zeus as the god of the sky, and was worshipped as Zeus Surgasteios, or Zeus Surgastes, like mentioned on the coins. Uh, the Kayarkas inscription, I call it Kayarkas inscription, uh, the one, uh, also mentions Decaprotoi, Decaprotoi for the first time for the region. But is, is it for Tios or for Hadrianopolis? On the coins of Hadrianopolis, we don't have any mention of Sugastros or Sugastes. By the way, uh, I think it's a little bit better to correlate the uh, inscription uh, with the Agon Sugastios that is celebrated in Tios. But uh, it's a regional cut. Why not? It was its worship in Hadrianopolis and also in the time of Hadrianus who supported these kinds of agons, as you know, uh, in the periods. That's why uh, we are not sure about it. And also the area, the area, uh, we don't know urban affiliation uh, to that place, that village. Does it, this area belongs to Tios or Hadrianopolis? This raises uh, another problem because we don't know where the boundaries passes on that region. Uh, surely the question as to the urban affiliation of today's village of Kayarkası brings forth not only the question of to what place the inscription relates to, but also leads us to inquire into the borderline between Tios and Hadriana Polis. Uh, Yenice district Kayarkası village where the inscription was found is located uh, in the region that forms the border between the ancient city of Tios and Adriana Polis. Although the inscription was included in the territory of Adriana Polis by the first publisher of the inscription, uh, it's clearly seen that there's this region uh, within the territory of the city of Tios uh, in the city borders uh, of Tios uh, that was in a map that was created by David French. He thinks that this area should be in the territory of Tios. The other inscriptions mentioning Sugas Tios here, uh, surprisingly coming from Romania. Uh, I think we have Romanian colleagues here today, from Dacia, Alba, Iulia, Emen, Ptolemaios, uh, Eohan, D. Surgasto. The inscription is uh, here. The other one is from Brixia, Brescia, it's Latin inscription, this pattern is. Surgasteo, Magno Pataro. We see the, God, the name of the God here, Surgasteus Magnus Patarus. As you remember, Stephanus Byzantinus uh, mentioned a Ctistes, a Thracian Ctistes was, he was Patarus. He combines, this inscription combines two names here, Surgasteus and Magnus Patarus. The man was Quintus Mucius in question, with question mark, Turufon as Wotum uh, Solid Livens Merito here. It was uh, possibly, we are not sure about it, who's, who's these, who these men were here, but uh, maybe immigration to that part from the Azeminor, they dedicated this altar there in the name of Surgastes. Uh, re really, Surgastes was a tracing god. Uh, all of the questions rise in that uh, inscription by the Kayarkasi inscription. And also, maybe there should be more comments made on Sugastios and also these inscriptions. You see here also Kayakas village, the map of Christian Marek here. 
sorry, David French, map of David French. And also, uh, I think <laughs> we had one hour. Uh, maybe if you look the last one uh, inscription, this is also important. This is the last inscription that I published uh, last year. Uh, Gravestead of uh, Veteranus. It was it is the first one that was found in the region. You see that uh, the beginning part of the inscription is illegible, and also the uh, lower part of the inscription is broken. We have just remaining here five uh, lines here. By the way, uh, I made I made so many search uh, about this inscription. I tried to read all missing parts. Uh, tried so many ways to take one letter or one word except from these surviving lines. What I had uh, surely is that he was veterans here. You see. And also a common usage, Strateus Samenos here. Also, I was sure that it was N Legio, and also with a compilation N Legioni. And what was important here is the title of Legioni. It was in Greek, surely, Eusebe here, the missing letters you see here. You see here Kai, and also Piste with the ligature here. By the way, uh, I was sure that it was Pia Fidelis. It was a legion with the title of the epithet of uh, Pia Fidelis here. And also the other remaining part, the continuing part of the inscription. Uh, it was very hard for me to understand which letters were this, but uh, at the end of my research, I decided that there is an Omicron here and also a slightly visible Sigma here, what allowed me uh, as a Latin equivalent, qui uh, vixit, ezese ete or etesin, something like that goes on there. And also maybe we would have, uh, have the uh, age of the deceased veteranus here. Uh, having served in the legio, blah, blah, we don't know which legio is that because there is a missing letters here. Pia et Fidelis, Veteranus, Pontius, Galat, blah, blah. It is possibly Galates, who lives, blah, blah, years, lies here. My suggestion for reading this inscription was in that way. And also, unfortunately, we don't have here for the breakage, due to, due to the breakage, we, couldn't, we cannot read the uh, prime nomen here but maybe there should be some uh, suggestions about the prime moment here. This is the part where the inscription was found, where the inscription is said to be found. I didn't find the inscription. Uh, now it is in Karadeniz Ereli Museum. Uh, also, they thought that it was brought here as a result of also some surveys, research were made there by uh, our colleague, Professor Günger Karaoz. He also, uh, made photographs of the inscription, but we are sure that it was found here, but not in situ, unfortunately. So uh, this area is also a problem. Uh, to which city should it belong here? Now, again, any other uh, boundary problem rises here. Erzba region, it is Devrek region here. Uh, just to the north of the town of Erzba, where the gravestone was found, the ancient rural settlement, Dadubra, but with question mark. Today it is called Devrek, but also we have another Dadubra in Safranbolu today. By the way, we are not sure that it is really Dadubra, but I mentioned that site here is tentatively localized along the Ladon or Devrek River, modern Devrek. River. The Dibra is listed as one of the suffragans of the Gangra Chank Metropolitan, which was the episcopal center of Paphlagonia from the 4th to the 13th uh, centuries AD. In that area, uh, a necropolis is known uh, with unknown borders because there is no uh, excavation here today, just as some salvage excavations were made by Karadeniz Museum, I know that. Was, was partially unearthed during the excavations, which includes various types of burial 
chambers. Possibly this uh, inscription, the inscription, grave inscription of this veteranus uh, was maybe in that necropolis, I believe that. So, uh, as you see here, the list of the legions who have the title of Piafidelis. By the way, uh, it seems impossible to identify uh, the legions who this veteran served when he was alive. Uh, first Minerva, Adutrix, second Adutrix, and also you see the years when they had the title Pia Fidelis. But uh, for Terminus Antiquian, he may have uh, 11th Gladio Legion, Legio. Uh, it had the title in 42 AD, you know. And also the, you see the here. We have so many grave inscriptions that were found in Azemnur related with the legionari of legions, of Roman legions, also veteran of Roman legions. I pass this uh, slide. So uh, this sandstone stell makes no a new legionary veterans from Eastern Bithynia, Western Paphlagonia, uh, named Pontius Galat, lacking a prynomen, possibly due to the breakage, who fought, who fought for an unknown legio that bears the cognomen Pia Fidelis for an unidentified period. The title Pia Fidelis states the inscription after AD 42 as terminus of Osquiam, since the first occasion for the bestowal of the titles that was in that year when Legio 7 and Legio 11 were given the titles Claudio Pia Fidelis by Claudius. The remaining text was only inscribed in Greek. Uh, we don't have any bilingual or Latin uh, description in the remaining parts. And this shows that it was meant to be read and understood by the Greek speaking inhabitants of the area, maybe it is Dadubra, or the area where the stone was set up. His name, uh, Pontius Galat, was presumably native to the region, and as his cognomen Galat suggests that he may have had a Galatian, maybe, origin who returned to his hometown, that is because neighbor regions, not far away from the east, uh, Eastern Bithynia or Western Paphlagonia, very near regions for Galatia. Uh, upon completion of his military service, if it is really uh, belongs to that area, surely. The status and the urban appellation of Özba and Devrek region where the gravestone was found under Provincia Pontus et Bithynia, in the Roman imperial period is unknown. The closest ancient cities to the region are Heraclea Pontica in the Northwest and Teos in the Northeast. Uh, one of them is uh, 65 kilometers, the other is Heraclea 75 kilometers, the center I mean from there. So uh, you see on the two inscriptions, the Kayarkas inscriptions and also the Derrick inscriptions, uh, makes us to search about the boundaries of these cities that were located in the eastern part of uh, Bithynia or western part of Paphlagonia. Maybe a, a intensive survey research uh, after uh, that uh, should be made in the area because it's, uh, the area is, uh, consists of forests and also in some cases it's maybe impossible to clarify these boundaries, where they pass us from. Uh, but uh, as a veteranus, if he had settled there, uh, maybe the area where possibly he was living there after his retirement, but the area maybe uh, should be given to him, maybe by the Romans, but uh, we don't know any colonia in that uh, part of the region, in that part of the provincia. Maybe it was his own land. He came back to that here and also lived there uh, till the end of his life. Surely there are so many inscriptions I should mention, but uh, the time is very late. Uh, by the way, uh, if you let me, uh, I will finish my presentation here today. Uh, again, uh, you see here our excavation house uh, here with a group of the members of also Shine Mildred here and also some photographs from the excavation house of Filios. Uh, also uh, the place where we have our lunches, dinners at the excavation south. 
uh, house and also some photographs from the excavation team. Sumerta uh, Soy, Shahin Yildirim here, uh, Ümer Güçen uh, from Canadian Israeli Museum, the representative of the museum, and also Ali Bora, and also the students here who are working there. Uh, thank you for your participation to my uh, presentation today. I hope everything was clear. Sometimes a problem of English speaking, but I hope everything was clear for you. Uh, that's all I may say to you. Thank you.